So my name is Anthony Duran, and today I'm going to be introducing you to Lightning, a platform that's going to change the way you travel. And Lightning's going to do that in three ways. It's going to do the planning for you, adjust in the moment to meet your needs, and provide authentic local content. To explain how Lightning works, I'd like to introduce you to Nathan. Nathan is 30 and lives in Seattle with his wife, Jess, and he's planning a trip to Chicago. Now we just got Lightning. But traditionally, his planning process might look something like this. He would go in, strap on his armor, and get ready to do battle with this, the planning monster. So what you can see is he's going through, looking at Google, looking at a bunch of different websites, pulling information from a bunch of different guidebooks, going to friends, asking them what, they should, what he thinks they should, be, they should be doing on this trip, and then trying to pull all of that information together. And so what Lightning allows him to do is not have to worry about all of that and just deal with one system. So let's take a look at what that looks like. First, he's going to sign up for an account. And then he can tell Lightning a little bit about himself so that it can plan customized scripts just for him. Or he can import these interests from social media if he doesn't have time to do that. Then he can start planning trips. He can enter dates. He can choose what types of activities he thinks would be most interesting. And he can customize further by looking at his budget, transportation, and asking his friend what kind of things they would suggest. Then he's going to get something that looks like this. A fully fleshed out itinerary, which he can create in about 10 minutes, instead of combing through things for hours looking for that list. What you can see is a map that shows where he's going to be going throughout the city, as well as a calendar style view. And what I'd like to draw your attention to is these locked and unlocked icons. So what's unique about Lightning is that you can decide in, that you definitely want to do certain things and you're not as concerned about others. So Nathan knows that he really wants to go thrifting because that's something that his friend Sarah suggested to him. And he really wants to go to a show at the empty lot. But he doesn't really care about where he goes for dinner. And so he can look at different suggestions that Lightning has made for him. So maybe instead of going to Cheesy's, he's going to go to Clark's Diner or one of the other restaurants that's around him. And so that's how Lightning can help you be flexible planning ahead. But Lightning can also help you be flexible in the moment. So let's join Nathan as he's getting ready to leave Twin Anchors, which is a restaurant in Lincoln Park. He's getting ready to leave and head to Green Element Resale. And he can pull out Lightning and see that he should be taking the number 36 bus. So he goes to the bus stop, and this is what he sees. The bus is pulling away. Fortunately, he can just tell Lightning that he needs a new route. And it will quickly say, okay, you should instead head to the brown line and then go up to Green Island Resale, where he arrives without a hitch. The next day, he's going to go ahead and start his day by going to 1871, which is an incubator downtown. And what he's going to do there is, because he's really interested in entrepreneurship, he's going to end up spending a little bit of extra time there, which is okay, because Lightning is keeping track of that for him. So as he leaves, he's going to get a little message that says, you spent a little more time here than you anticipated. So what we're going to do is, instead of taking you to the 3D printer experience, we're going to take you to the Chicago Architecture Foundation. Because that's on the way to the Art Institute. And we know that that's an event that you locked in for today that you really want to go to. So Lighten is able to anticipate those needs and, and understand this is really what you want to be doing today. <coughs> so we can shuffle around some of these other events. Nathan can then choose to either accept or reject this change. In this case, he decides to accept the change, and so he's going to go and see this model city that they have at the Architecture Foundation before walking across the street to the Art Institute. So, take a breath. I know that I've thrown a lot at you, and you're probably wondering how all of this comes together and works. And that's what I'm going to talk about now. Hopefully. <laughs> so, the way Lightning works is it really pulls together four different components. The first component are these technology partners which come together to create a really solid backend and help deal with the information that's coming from our content partners. With content partners, we're able to create some really strong data. And then we can add flavor to that with people who use Lightning in the city of Chicago and provide their own tips and tricks. All of that then finally comes together to a staff that works at Lightning to curate all of this content. And as they're curating that content, they're creating really unique local experiences that are then being used to to guide people like Nathan through the city. And that's what enables people to discover all of these great sites throughout the city that they wouldn't be able to find on their own. 
And that's like, so now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the insights that led me there. So the three insights that I had were really around this idea of anchor events, in the moment planning, and authenticity and culture. So the first insight is anchor events. And what I mean when I'm talking about anchor events is something like this. People typically have one or two things that they really want to do when we visit a new city. But they really don't care about all of these other kind of events that they're filling their time with. So you might see a list of something that looks like, these are the things that I must see, and these are the things that I might see when I'm going to a city. And that's what really led to this feature that you saw when we were talking about making these long-term online events. People really care about certain things, but they're willing to be flexible on others. This insight really came out of when I was interviewing someone and they were talking about this um, trip that they were going on and they were planning on a particular restaurant and that was really what they wanted to do. They wanted to make sure that they made it to this restaurant. So they had plans earlier in the day, but those plans were really flexible. And it turned out that you know, they ended up changing a couple things, they ended up um, moving some things around, but they made damn sure that at 7 o'clock they got to the restaurant on time. And so understanding that there are some things that are inflexible and something that's, that needs to move is what was really important in developing life. So the next component is an in-the-moment planner. And for this, really what I looked at was the existence of other planning tools. There are tools out there to help people plan ahead. But what I found is there aren't really many tools that look at this other dimension of planning in the moment. Planning for things when transit goes wrong or planning for things when you spend too long at an event. And so that's really what I wanted to do, was enable people to have a tool that they can carry in their pockets pull out and say, what should I be doing now? This event, this uh, insight really came around when I was talking to someone and they were telling me about how painful it is to travel with their children. They said they always have to be on their toes, they always have to be really flexible, and that's because you know kids can get bored, they can get hungry, they always have something that they're trying to, to change, and so you have to really look for something that's not just a way to plan ahead, but a way to plan in the moment. And then the final insight that I had, kind of similar to what Stacy was talking about earlier, is around how people are looking for authentic and local experiences and really want to find culture. And what I've done here is actually shown a bunch of different ways that people experience culture. And the reason this is important for Lightning is because everyone is looking for these authentic cultural things. That's why the curation team for Lightning is really important. But everyone has a different way that they experience culture. So some people experience culture as seeing what locals do and interacting really and in getting into the daily lives of people that are living in the city. Some people are really interested in history and architecture. And for some people, culture is really about food. And that's why it's important for Lighten to understand the interests of the individuals that use it. So again, my name is Anthony. This is Lighten, a platform that's going to change the way you travel.